There was a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is something that when I think about it, I laugh so much that I can't control my laughter. And then there is another thing. When I think about it, when I remember it, I cry so much, but I can't control my tears. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the time of jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance, there was a time when once I, I went on a journey and I decided to take my God with me, the idol that I used to worship. And he said, the idol that I carried it and it was very heavy. And I thought that I will die under the burden of my ma'bud if I carry this ma'bud with me. So he decided to create another ma'bud. He said, I got together some flowers, some atta, then I made the idol. And he said, then I made the idol with atta and then I weighed it and it was a lot lighter. And I decided I'll take the, the ma'bud with me. So I took the ma'bud with me on the journey. And then wherever I would stop, I would worship the ma'bud. I would worship my God. And then he said that the food that I had taken with me, it had finished. And then for some days I became very patient and I did sabr, but then I lost patience, I lost sabr. And then one day I felt so hungry that I just prepared that butter and I made some khubz with it, some bread with it and I started to eat it. And he said, oh God, if you're not going to help me now, then when will you help me? The companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this, is, this was the state of our ignorance, this is how ignorant we were. He said, now think about that. I can't stop laughing. I cannot stop laughing. This is how ignorant we were. And there's one thing when I think about that, I can't stop crying. The Prophet said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah in the time of ignorance, in the time of jahiliyyah, there was a time when I went out from my place and my wife was, was pregnant. And you know the, the kind of cultural pressure that we had at that time about having daughters. He said, I traveled from my city to another city. I went on a journey. When I left, my wife was pregnant. And when I came back, my wife told me that I had a daughter. She came running to me and she embraced me. She hugged me and she expressed a lot of love for me. And he said, I felt, I fell in love with her. I, had, I was attached to my, my daughter. But the pressure of the community was so much. I thought that she would bring shame to me, to my ancestors and to my family. This is what they thought about daughters. And he said that my wife had this fear as well, that one day I may take her life. I may kill her, I may murder her, I may bury her alive. That's how they treated the daughters. He said, I couldn't take it anymore. And she was growing old and she, she was close to uh, the age of maturity. And she said that one, he said one day, I just told my wife, I said, give her some good clothing, dress her up and comb her hair and I'm taking her out for a party. And he said, my wife knew that she suspected me that I'm about to do what the Arabs do at that time. He said that I told my wife and he said she couldn't do anything. She was crying. My wife was crying and she was combing her hair and she, she dressed her up in good clothing. And he said that when she was crying, my daughter asked my wife, she asked, mother, why are you crying? And the mother couldn't inform her. She couldn't tell her and she had a lot of love and she said, look, daddy is taking me out today. This is the first time my father is taking me out. You should be happy. And he said that then after that, I took her with me. And before I, I, I left from there, he said, my wife said to me, Ya Rajul, la tudayya al-amana. Ya Rajul, la tudayya al-amana. Do not lose the trust. Do not lose the trust. When she is amana, she is amana. Do not lose the trust. He said, I had a lot of love for her, but I took her with me. He said that I took her. He said I went there and she was talking to, to her father. She was constantly asking me, where are we going? Where are we going, O oh father? And then the father said that I'm taking you somewhere. And then the father takes her to a place and he says that I dug up the, in the desert, I disintegrated the zameen. And then after that, she was helping her father. She was helping her father and the father, according to one narration, he, he was sweating and she was feeling sorry for her father, that the father is tired, so she would help her father. Allahu Akbar Kabira. And then he said that I became so ruthless, so stone-hearted that I picked her up and I threw her in the ditch. I threw her in the ditch in that cover and 
she started to scream, she started to cry, Oh Father, Baba, what are you doing? Oh Father, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? We were supposed to go for a party, for a celebration, according to one narration to a relative's wedding. What are you doing, Oh Father? He said, I had love for her, but I couldn't do anything. And then, according to another narration, the father had, he says that I had some dust on my beard, and she was in the ditch, and, and she was cleaning the dust. She was cleaning my face out of love. And he said, but I became so ruthless. And then one thing that she said, what she heard from her mother, what the mother said, لا تدي الأمانة, لا تدي الأمانة. She said, Baba, oh father, oh father, remember what my mother said? Do not lose the trust. This amana, do not lose the trust. He said, nothing affected me. And then gradually, her tiny voice, I couldn't hear it anymore. And then she passed away. He says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Whenever I think about that, he says, at night I can't go to sleep because I hear her screaming, Baba, Baba, oh Father, oh Father, la tudayi al-amana. He said, this is what I did in the time of Jahiliyyah. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one thing makes me laugh and I can't control my laughter. And this is something that makes me cry and I can't control my tears. And in one narration, a father buried his daughter alive and she said, do not tell my mother, do not tell my mother, tell my mother that you took me to a qabila, to a tribe. And he left me there because she won't be able to bear this. In one incident, the Prophet ﷺ was sitting next to Sayyidatuna Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Rasulullah ﷺ's daughter and the Prophet ﷺ started to cry. Rasulullah sallallahu started to shed tears and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa embraced Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha and gave her love and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to the man if Allah permitted me, if my Lord permitted me, if Allah gave me izan for what you people did, if I was permitted to take revenge and to punish you for what you did before you became Muslims you would have been the first one that I would take a revenge against I would punish you, you would be the first one to be punished This is what was happening to the daughters. And what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do? What did he give to women? Allahu Akbar Kabira. You know, there's one incident where, where three brothers, three brothers sold their mother in the market for 900 dirhams. 900 dirhams. This is what was happening in the Arab civilization. For 900 dirhams, they actually sold their mother. And Rahmatullil Alameen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? He made people, the same Bedouins, the same ruthless people, he made them believe that Jannah is at your mother's feet. And this wasn't just the same, this, they actually believed in that. The companions believed in that. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam totally transmogrified the values of humanity. He changed the understanding about humanity. They didn't know what humanity was.